Moyen, I am Arianna. Moyen, I'm Kirsten. And we are researchers at the University of Luxembourg. And lately, we have been researching manipulative designs in online interfaces. Namely, dark patterns. Those interface designs that push people to spend uh, money on products they didn't intend to buy, spend way too much time on a service, or to give away their personal data. And this is why we asked, what can be done about dark patterns? But before thinking about interventions, we believe it's important to understand how users actually perceive dark patterns. So, for example, are users actually aware of manipulative designs online and their influence on their behavior? And also, when users encounter manipulative designs online, are they able to recognize them? And what if people are aware and able to recognize them? Would they still be influenced by dark patterns in their behavior? This is why we decided to run a user study, and we're going to show you what we did. Here's our study design. We start with the uh, first part, uh, where we show the participants three statement pairs uh, to measure their awareness of dark patterns in online interfaces. They were supposed to rate uh, each pair on a five-point uh, Likert scale. And after this first part, we move to the second part, to gather also some demographic information, uh, among others, their frequency of online service use. And then in the, in the third part, we designed a game that we called the Spot the Dark Pattern. So we showed a series of interface designs to our participants, taken from real examples, but freed of any reference to a brand. And we asked them whether they would find any manipulative design element inside of these examples. It um, uh, forces users to consent to use a service. And this uses a very confusing wording to tell the users how they can opt out of marketing notifications. We showed uh, those interfaces only for a few seconds, and then people had to write down what manipulative elements they found. After going through all the examples, uh, they got an explanation for the dark patterns in the interfaces, and then they had to rate again on a five-point Likert scale whether they thought the pattern was influential or not on their behavior and whether they thought it's a tolerable strategy or rather not. So let's see what we have found out. So we managed to gather answers from 406 participants. And it's a representative sample of the UK population in terms of age, gender and ethnicity. Thank, Thank you, you prolific. prolific. And if you remember, our first research question asked whether people are aware of manipulative designs in online environments. So what did we find out? Let's have a look. These are the three statements that people had to rate from I don't agree at all to I totally agree. And we see that people agree they are quite aware that manipulative online interfaces exist. However, they are uncertain whether this can cause them harm and they don't seem too worried about it. We asked them to rate these statements for themselves, but also for people in general. And running a, a two-sided sign test, we could actually see a significant difference in between the ratings. So we see that they are aware, but even more aware that interfaces that manipulate people can influence other people more than themselves, can cause other people more harm than themselves, and they are worried for other people, but not so much for themselves. Which is not surprising. I mean, a lot of risk behavior works in the same way. So the problem is that people think that other people are more vulnerable to certain risks than themselves. For what concerns research question number two, we asked whether people were able to recognize dark patterns in the examples that we showed them. What did we find out? So first of all, um, we qualitatively coded all the answers for our examples and we coded whether participants recognize the dark pattern or not. And what we see is that actually nearly half of all participants recognized six, seven, eight or all nine dark patterns. That's reasonably high as a result. So this means that people are generally able to recognize dark patterns However, there, is, there are great variations depending on the dark pattern type. So certain dark patterns seem to be more difficult to spot than others. Yes, indeed. Uh, for example, we had this dark pattern uh, from an online dating app 
where people wish to delete their account. It has a very ambiguous uh, wording and only 16% of the participants recognize this dark pattern. In this hotel booking page, there are a lot of urgency scarcity messages and 84% of people could recognize them exactly. But we also looked at on whether there were individual differences, uh, for example, in terms of age and education that would influence the ability of our participants to recognize dark patterns. We did find uh, two effects. We can see that people uh, younger than 40 recognized more dark patterns. And we also saw that people with a uh, rather low education at degrees uh, recognized less dark patterns. So there are differences. And for what concerns research question number three, where we asked, notwithstanding the fact that people are aware of the existence of dark patterns and also able to recognize them, are they nevertheless susceptible to be influenced by them? Interestingly, we didn't find many predictors for people's likelihood to be influenced. The only thing we could see from the regression plot is actually um, a tendency of people who detect less dark patterns to also assume that they would be more influenced by those. So what we found is that people are quite able to recognize dark patterns and they're also quite aware of the influence of manipulative designs on their, on their behaviors. However, we found that awareness is not a significant factor in predicting people's ability to resist that influence. We also saw that certain dark patterns are much easier to recognize than others. And we also saw that people find certain dark patterns easy to recognize, but very hard to resist. On top of this, there are dark patterns, such as autoplay, that the participants deemed very influential and at the same time, they said that was a tolerable strategy because it benefits their user experience. So we use the term dark patterns for design strategies that are intrinsically very different. And as a consequence, this means if we want to counteract dark patterns, we also need variegated interventions. This is why we designed a matrix of interventions that we're going to show you in a while. So we imagined a matrix of different interventions that can aim at different scopes. For example, certain interventions can raise awareness toward the, towards the risks of dark patterns. Certain others can help people detect dark patterns. And then other interventions can help people resist them. But we can also think of interventions that can eliminate dark patterns from online web altogether. And then these measures can be very different. We can have measures uh, that affect the user directly, such as educational measures. We can also have measures that influence the use environment, such as uh, regulatory measures. And in between, we can find design interventions as well as um, technical interventions. So what kind of interventions actually go in the different spaces? For instance, <clears throat> if we wanted to act on the awareness of people through design, then maybe an idea would be to use warnings. Um, but warnings quickly tire people and they stop recognizing them. So we certainly also need educational measures that raise people's ability to detect dark patterns. For example, the one that we did in the survey, the spot the dark pattern game. And together with educational interventions, we can also have other kind of design interventions. So for instance, friction designs. Friction designs can introduce small obstacles to the user interaction so that the user takes on more reflective actions, for example, more reflective data sharing. And this would go here. We also believe that we need ethical design guidelines, uh, such as um, recommendations that help designers uh, adopt pride patterns, so that we can eliminate dark patterns from the web altogether. But we also have technical interventions. For instance, plugins that help the users to fill in automatically very complex consent requests. And these would go here. These interventions alone won't be enough. Dark patterns are omnipresent. This is why we really need to set FT fines for those industries that are using illegal dark patterns in order to set a standard. There's still space for more interventions. And here we need your help because we as designers 
should all be on the front line to tame the monster that we help create. So thank you for watching our video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And also if you're working on similar topics, we would be very happy to liaise. Adi!